Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So this is gonna be probably a short episode about, uh, this is gonna be a follow up about the taper attachment that's following last weekend's videos that I put out about machining a taper on the Monarch lathe and how to set up this taper attachment. I showed you how to set the taper attachment to cut the taper you want. One way to set it anyway. I showed you one way how I did that. And uh, cutting cutting a taper over here. I made, I made that part for John up at NYC CNC. And I had a lot of people asking questions. A lot of viewers are curious on how how that cross slide and how the carriage actually works whenever you're cutting a taper because of it moving. You know, everybody's thinking that the the uh, cross slide lead screw is detached whenever it's cutting, but it's actually not. And it's, uh, you know, without getting in there looking at it, it is a little hard to understand how it works. But once you see how it works, it makes a little bit more sense. And I'm not going to be taking this apart to show you everything. I've never actually taken that apart. I just know what what's on the outside here and about how it works. But there's enough there to show you, and I think you'll understand how it's working once I show you. So that's what I'd like to do is uh, take the camera in there a little closer and show you what's moving whenever the taper attachment in the carriage is actually feeding back and forth. What's making that work, what's allowing everything to move while you're feeding and moving the carriage down. That's, I think that's what we're trying to get at right there. So hopefully I can show you and you'll understand it. Uh, a couple other things that's, that I figured I would go over. There were some other questions about some other things. I figured I can uh, go ahead and answer those. Just some other other things in the shot here whenever I was showing things. I've got something on the wall there that I had people ask me about, the indicators. I got something else on the wall right here that I'm gonna show you. So I just figured I would throw those in here as well, make a little bit of fun content, okay? So I'll go ahead and start with the uh, with the stuff on the wall and, and show you show you what's out here. <laughs> All right, so over here, the first thing I want to point out is that the only reason that picture was turned backwards is because I was getting a glare on it and I was trying to hide it from the camera, but I think you might still be getting a glare. From, I, got a, I got a spotlight on the other side of the shop there, so you may see a little light over there in the window, but that's the only reason that was turned around. But what I was going to show you was... Uh, I had somebody ask me what this was and I was wondering if anybody was ever going to uh, see this in, in a video and, and I think I might have had somebody in the past ask me about it. So this is a, it's like a brooch but it's a key cutter for a key seater machine. This is actually one of the cutters so it's for a Davis key seater and if you look right there you should be able to see that it says Davis key seater on it and I remember this is a half inch cutter let's see here Davis key seater company Rochester New York high speed AFA one half inch so the reason I had hung this right here on this nail was because I've got the other ones that went to this Davis key seater in one of those cabinet drawers over there but this is this was the oddity it was really long and it wouldn't fit in the drawer so I was finding a place to hang it back when I was setting the shop up and that nail just seemed like the perfect place so it's just kind of a uh, it's a wall ornament really it's all it is I don't use this anymore I don't have a Davis key seater we used to have a Davis key seater in my old shop and me and dad had dismantled it and it needed a lot of repair work a lot of parts it was just slap wore out and we started working on some of the parts and fixing it when we were slow one time and then we never got to the to get back on it and finish it and i really regret it i i do and the inevitable happened to that machine and i won't mention it but you'll probably know what happened to it but anyway that's what's left of it right there i ended up selling all the plugs to somebody on practical machinist a while back but i still have all the cutters for a davis we, we had a number four so if anybody out there has a Davis key seater and you're looking for some good cutters, I've got a whole bunch of them and we had them all sharpened years ago and they were never used. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> so this was the other thing that I had some questions on and I have shown it and I know I showed it in one video and I can't remember what it was, but that's a belt sander 
and it's a, it's a belt sander or a polisher. I believe that is a crankshaft polisher is what it is, but this has been an extremely useful tool in our shop over the years. And I don't talk about it much, I don't show it much because I get so much flack about sanding and polishing on a lathe. I just, I, I don't like talking about it because I don't like hearing all the comments about it, but believe me, it happens all the time. I, I have one of these at my other shop where I work that we have the same one and we got it there because me and dad had this one and it serves very useful when you're polishing shafts or you've got big diameter pieces that you need to clean up especially if you got something that's got some corrosion on the outside that you just need to clean up this right here is a very safe method versus putting some emery paper around it and holding it on something so that's what this is <clears throat> this was just some little rack that I got at Harbor Freight a long time ago and it worked perfect for this so I'll go ahead and get real dusty because I haven't taken this down in a while but I'll show you how it works all right so you got a you got a couple handles on and off switch here's here's where you uh, loosen it to remove the belt and put one back on and give it tension you got a guard on top right there it actually says booth machine shop on it that I inscribed in a long time ago and it works real good I'm not gonna plug it in because I ain't got my glasses on and it'll sling dust all in my face as soon as I turn it on so that's what that is it's a polisher and it works great All right, the last thing we're going to go over that I had questions about was the was the mag back indicators that I used. So I don't recall what episode. You can do a search on my channel, but this one right here was given, it was actually machined and given to me by Scott Lundy out in, <laughs> I know it's California. I want to say O'Hay, California. I I'm, I'm apologize, Scott, if I got that wrong. O'Hay, I believe. So... He made this and he machined it so that it's got a fence in line parallel to the stem of the indicator. So he made it just for this. You can stick it on the ways right there, push it down, and it's automatically in line. So you don't have what, what they call a cosine error by having the needle picked up just a little bit one way or the other. Usually that doesn't hurt you too, too bad for doing this stuff, but that is a really nice design and Scott Scott did an awesome job. So we try to use that as much as we can. I usually just leave it right here on the Monarch. The other one that I that I used right here is uh, this one is a Shars brand dial indicator, and it comes with the magnetic back. This is my favorite style of magnetic back out of all of them. It's the strongest, but it's the cheapest too because the backing plate that comes with these are plastic, and they break very easy. So if um, if you guys are wanting to make an improvement, Shars, have your manufacturer build these in metal to make them a little bit stronger. Because whenever you go to um, pick these things up, if you try to pull on the indicator, you can see it rocking a little bit. If you do that too much, it ends up breaking the just pulling the stud out of the plastic. So you have to put it in a way so that you can put your fingers around the magnet and then pull it up. All right, so that's all it is, is just a, a Shars brand magnetic back, and this was given to me by a viewer. And this is one of my tips that I put on it to help me over here. So those are the two magnetic backs right there. You can buy this from them, you can buy it from anybody, but uh, you can pick that up from Shars. And I don't know what it costs, but I think it's only like maybe 20 bucks or so. I'd say between 20 and $30 for this entire setup. All right, so here's the, the meat and gravy of the video. We want to talk about the taper attachment. So as I stated, I readjusted the taper attachment. I put it on six inches per foot just to get a lot of movement out there. It's easier to see this operating. All right. So you have the cross slide that's moving. Nothing's happening to the handle, but you can still move this, right? So I had people thinking that I'm somehow disengaging this in order for this to work, but look. It's still working. All right. 
So I'm going to move the camera in a couple positions and show you how this thing is built and what's going on around here, all right? All right, so this is just the cover that you can remove. And I'm going to take it off and you can see a little more what's going on. Uh, by the way, one of the, the, the little stud right there is missing on that side, so it's only got one cat. So whenever you see me using this, you might see it doing that a little bit. All right. We also have, while I'm talking about this guard, what, how you usually see this machine, it has these other guards that go right here on each side. So you just slide that in. There's another stud back here on the back side of the, of the taper attachment that it sits on. It just kind of fits in there like so. And you got one that goes on this side. And then this goes back on top of it. So everything is pretty much guarded, you see. So that's, that's a really nice feature of the machine right there. Take this back off. Go ahead and get the guards out of the way because it looks cooler seeing it. Right, I'm going to try to give you a little peek at what's going on right here. I'm going to go ahead and move the cross slide back some. And if you'll look right here in the center, this piece, this is that bar that goes all the way to the back that sticks out the back end. And I'll give you another shot of that right there so you can see it. I'm going to move the taper attachment and you'll see all this moving right here. Uh-huh. So maybe that's starting to make a little bit more sense. Okay. So as the block in the channel of the taper attachment is following this angle, this screw is attached back here. It's attached to this plate right here. So that's making everything move. The cross slide right up here. That's going to make it move as you're sliding it. Okay. So the other question is if this screw is moving with the uh, with the cross slide here, what's it doing over here on this end on the handle? All right. So I'll bring you around here and show you this side. Before we come around here, I'm going to give you one more shot on this side. There's the block. Here's the, here's the plate that, that, that is sliding through here. That's this piece here, and it's going all the way through there. I can feel it underneath that. And this is a clamp bolt. Whenever you're not using the taper attachment, you actually tighten this to keep that from moving. So it's loose right now, and it's really been worked on over the years. It really needs a new one. So that entire plate through there is shifting because it's attached to this block right here. So you're looking down in the nasty guts of the cross slide. Please forgive me for this mess. That is, that is just a lot of muck that's not, that hadn't been cleaned up in a long time. This thing needs to be taken completely apart to clean all that out. So it's working fine right now. We're going to leave it like it is. So this shaft right here, that's your, that's your lead screw for your cross slide. I'm going to go ahead and crank the carriage and you'll see what's going on here. See it sliding. And you can still turn it. You can still turn the handle. So what I am going to assume, because I have not been into this, what I'm going to assume is that you have a male-female fit right here. I, I was thinking it may be a spline system, but I don't know. So it would make sense if it's something like that, even if it's just keyed. So you have, you have the male and female shafts that are fit together and it's keyed or locked in with a spline or something like that so that you can still turn this and turn the shaft and it has free movement as you're working the taper attachment to slide in and out. So that's really the best explanation I can give you right there as to what's going on because I just I haven't ever taken this off I've never had a reason to take this off and if I ever did then I would be able to fully show how this thing is all built and how it's set up so I'm sure some of you guys out there have probably been into this before and you already know that but this is kind of for the guys that don't understand what's going on on uh, how it works anyway you know and then while we're here, I'll go ahead and point this out one more time. This is your lock for threading, okay? 
whenever you want to do some threading, you have a positive stop. And it's, I think the end of the pin is a little warm because when I go back, it wants to bump out. So whenever you do your threading, if you'll engage this, and you, once you get ready to thread, then you go ahead and reset your zero. All right, disengage your thread, come back, and you have a positive stop every time. So that's one of the great features on the Monarch is this one. I know it's on the 10 E, and it's also, they have a system like this on the American Pacemaker as well, and I use it just about every time I'm threading. The American Pacemaker is a little different. It, it actually has a set screw on the side right here that you tighten up, and there's some kind of collar inside there that, that it locks against, and, but it does the same exact thing. You have you know, a forward and reverse movement that it stops against. Just trying to give you one more shot of everything, basically everything in motion here. So let's see, right down here. I know this has to do, I, I adjusted this a little bit ago, but this has to do with your uh, the nuts for the, the lead screw and also taking up the backlash. And one thing that I forgot to point out was that I actually adjusted this. I believe this is a wedge style, but I'm not sure. I, I, Brian Block, I think he knows how this is uh, set up because his is like it. But I adjusted this and I did get some backlash out of it. But I've got it, I put the indicator over here and I've got 25 thousandths backlash and that's about the best I can do. If I get it any tighter than that, then it just makes it too tight to try to screw to you know turn the to move it across there there's an old machine so you've got a lot of wear in the center which makes everything loose and then once you get out here on this end and way back here everything gets tighter on the uh, you know the dovetail fit the gib and the screw anyway man I hope y'all I hope y'all enjoyed that and maybe it's making a little bit more sense now on, as to how this taper attachment's working. And once again, two to cover, this is the clamp that holds the main body of the taper attachment that's bolted to the, the carriage here. This is what holds it and keeps it from moving. So we got our clamp down. This is a little guide rod that's, that follows through there. All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informing as well as entertaining <laughs> and hopefully answered some of your questions too. And now we know a little bit more about the taper attachment on the Monarch, on how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it buttoned back up, cleaned it off a little more. And uh, I think I have another taper attachment job coming up pretty soon too. I've got a, I got a pulley that needs to be bored and. I think I'm gonna have to set up to do a taper on it. So that'll be coming up later on whenever I get to it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed and see you on the next video.